Wait, 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 hold up. We've done this before. Let's try something new. One, two, one, two, three, four. Welcome to Rage Against the Mainstream, your full spectrum source for all things music, insight, and opinion. Today is September 21st, 2020. My name is Bill, and I'm joined here today with Connor and Steve. Yep. Yep. So, uh, have you guys encountered anything new or interesting in the past week? Um, I actually rediscovered this band. I hadn't listened to them in quite some time, and... They're actually one of my favorable thrash acts that doesn't really get a lot of notoriety. The band's Onslaught. They they formed in like the mid '80s. They were part of like the tail end of like Exodus and every one of them getting like big and obviously the big four thrash. Yeah. Um. And then they had a couple lineup changes. I don't know if you know the band Grim Reaper. Like See You in Hell. Yeah. They they had him for a, an album at one point. Then they had this other singer that came back. But they just released a new album back on August seventh. Um. It's called Generation Antichrist because they got super like <laughs> anti-religion at their tail end. The, the album, the thing with me with New Thrash, a lot of it becomes too polished. They kind of lose that production value of that that real like crunchy, like raw sound. Yeah. Where it's not like punk or like black metal raw, but it's like enough to be where you can hear the tempo and really hear the talent in the guitars. Yeah, exactly. But the album itself, it's, it's like an average listen. I listened to the whole thing a couple times now. It's just not doesn't really do it for me in the sense of like newer thrash metal bands. It's just like an older band trying to keep up. And yeah, I mean, it's worth a listen if you like the genre, but the album itself, just uh average at best. <laughs> if I was a rate your music reviewer on this, it would probably barely make the five star cut. Wouldn't that be like above average if it's making the five, it would barely five make star it. cut? It, like I think anything around the five star area, it's like it's worth a listen because you might like it. But to me, it's like you talking I've listened about five to five out of ten. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> rate no. your music's out of five. Is it out of five? Yeah, that's I swore it was like on a percentage yeah. base as well. Okay, so then it would be like a two, two, two and a half, two, almost two and a half. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna dick Connor around with rate your music. He's an editor on the page. I forgot. Yeah, two point eight. I'm standing around. <laughs> Royalty at this point in time in the rate your music generation. This is the second episode in a row. I'm bigger on Wikipedia. (laughs) Feel free to use us for your platform to expose yourself through the airwaves. Rate your music. The free encyclopedia. Absolutely. (laughs) If you haven't been on it, we highly recommend. Oh, absolutely. It's where I get like 90% of all. Find so much shit on there. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. So I've got a inlet by hum. 90s shoegaze alternative metal favorites nice known for their hit stars uh their new album yeah it's called inlet um i like the track step into you nice my new interesting this week is not music related well i guess it kind of nah no that i can't even tie this in this is just completely not music related mm-hmm. at all uh netflix released lucifer season five part mm-hmm. one and I got midway through it, and gotta say, they did it again. <laughs> they did it. Let me ask again. you this, because we were just talking about this in the sense, because I tried to get through it. I got through like half a season one. I just kind of fell off with it, and then other yeah. shit kind of came on the map that I started watching, um, like Ozark and like other shows at that yeah. point in time. If you were gonna put this like overall as a show, like related to something that's like widely known, and like how good it is in your opinion. Well, what do you mean? Like, like what's I, one of your favorite shows like that you've seen in full that like you could rewatch on a regular occasion? Well, I mean, that would be like The Office or Parks and Recreation. It's nowhere even close. Well, I'm saying in the sense of like even like Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad, The Sopranos, or even um. You know, well, it's a Jerry Stranger Bruckheimer. Things. It's Jerry Bruckheimer directed series, yeah. so it is good. I mean, I wouldn't put it up on like the plateau of like you know The Sopranos by any means, but it's kind of like um. Sopranos is on. How do you relate it to like yeah. Dexter? 
I'd, I'd say it's just as good as Dexter. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I kind of got the same vibes with that as I did when I started watching Dexter it. fucking tanks. That's the problem. Well, yeah. That's yeah. Like, yeah exactly. The end of Dexter was Dexter terrible. tanked hard. Yeah. Like, um... But that's the thing with this show. It's like newer, so you haven't even gotten to a point of possible. Are they tankage. bringing back Dexter? I thought I heard something about. That. I heard something about that. He didn't too. die. I wasn't sure. I mean, it's fucked up. Deb died, but yeah. Sorry for all the listeners around that. Spoiler alert! Watched. You should just put a bleep in that whole section. Just like it's fucked up to beep. You know, because like yeah, that'd be funny as well. But yeah, I mean, I guess I can I can relate it to Dexter. It's like if Dexter meets like CSI. Well, I was going to ask that because Jerry Bruckheimer did CSI. Yeah, it's like CSI meets Lucifer meets like uh, like angels Wait, and demons. What? Lucifer. Lucifer is like CSI meets Lucifer. Yeah, pretty much. It's like not <laughs> it's like using the sense. word in the definition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well. Hold on. To get a good understanding of the show, you have to realize that it's also a comic series through DC. Yeah. Lucifer is the devil, but Lucifer lives in Los Angeles, California as a human being that owns a nightclub. So he's like super fucking rich. Mm -hmm. And he somehow just stumbles his way into becoming a civilian. uh, What the fuck do they call it? An antihero. No, no, no. Like um, for the for the Los Angeles Police Department, he's like a um, private investigator. Yeah, pretty much like a yeah, like a. Yeah, consultant. Yeah, there we okay, go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a f- civilian consultant for the LAPD, and, like, he's solving all these fucking cases that and shit. That he can just fucking see through his devil fucking vision. Isn't that, like, the issue? Isn't it, like, they're trying Cheater. to bring him back to hell or something yeah. like that, and he's, you know... Yep, and he doesn't like, want to really go. Enjoying. I'm having too much fun. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much. <laughs> pretty yeah. much. Yeah. He's like... I gotta revisit it, because it did come up as a number one recommended thing, and dude, it reminded it's good. me I'm that I started you. watching it. Either of it. you, it's a good show. Yeah. X-Files was another show that fucking tanked hard. That's what I've heard. Like, the first five seasons are really good of X-Files. Even the sixth and seventh one are pretty good, but then after that... It's just My biggest garbage. tank of all time is Game of Thrones. That was the biggest fucking letdown <laughs> of, you know, cinematic it's so television. funny. Because- yeah, I love that Game of Thrones tank because the whole time I was like, I fucking don't vibe. And I was show. that guy for about four seasons. I refused to get into it. But I'm like into that medieval, like even like black metal songs. Shit. I love yeah. that like epic It's also feel. European centered to me. I don't I don't like the Eurocentric aspect of like the old medieval shit. Like, yeah, like, like yeah, Middle yeah. Earth and all that other shit. I'm, yeah, like, I'm, all, about, fan I'm all about that like, shit. Like where, where are the... Uh, where are the Chungs and, like, uh, the African... People? Oh, dude, the Unsullied. <laughs> <laughs> huh? She frees all these slaves and makes this army of the Unsullied. In, in Game of Thrones? Yeah, in, like, the fifth season. There's that's where she gets her armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One, huh. one of the main girls that is Middle Sandra, She's she was a slave. What about and, Asians? Well, I mean... No Asians? Come on. Well, I mean, we got, like, three billion Asians. Out of, like, seven billion. Well, Aaron... <laughs> no Aaron, representation. Aaron Rodgers made it Where's on the, the diversity? cast listing. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers from Stained? Oh, from the Green Bay Packers. Oh, wait. Oh, Aaron Lewis. <laughs> Whoops. Wrong Aaron. All That's right. funny. Anyway. I, mean, I, I mean, Aaron Rodgers looks like he probably loves all that shit. Yeah, so. he, he was in like a brief second he's where he got burned up by off. Dragonfire. He was just yeah. like a, an extra. Is that, he on the Packers this year? Yeah. Okay, I don't know. They signed a, they, they drafted a quarterback, though, and it was a big problem. They were like, oh, we need receivers, and like the second pick, they drafted a well, quarterback. Well, dude, Aaron Rodgers has been there for a minute <laughs> now. He replaced Brett Favre. Yeah, no, it's like the yeah. same, they're yeah. doing the same thing, pretty much. Yeah. You, I mean, I don't know if it's popular belief or not, but a show I feel like severely tanked, and you could probably attest to it, is The Walking Dead. Oh, I stopped watching it. Dude. Is it still on? It killed me. <laughs> I was because I used to 10. read those fucking graphic novels. Like I read Dude. them because I didn't have an opportunity for a period of time, so I was keeping up with it by reading ahead. And He's printing money. Yeah, dude, I started watching it, and this buff. show, I, I knew what was going to happen. I was like, how do you end a show like this, A, and B, how do you keep it going long enough to keep it fresh? But it's the Bro. same. You know, Shia LaBeouf is blacklisted because he called out Steven Spielberg for printing money. With Indiana Jones 5, he's like, Steven Spielberg isn't, it? you know, he's like, I thought this was like the moment of my career, I was going to be an Indiana Jones oh, movie, yeah, yeah. come <laughs> to find out that Steven Spielberg isn't actually an artist anymore, he's just printing money with fucking reboots and shit. Shia LaBeouf got st- fucking shafted by Hollywood. He got shafted because, bad for because he, yeah. he, 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 bit a, he bit a big to, hand that fed. Yeah, he refused to buy into the... But Steven Spielberg didn't, like, make him or anything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he like he's not little Timmy from fucking Jurassic Park. She yeah, buffs no. his own man. Yeah. <laughs> 
completely unrelated, but kind of related to the whole Hollywood thing now. Did you see the meme where they were talking about Corey Feldman and like how he was right like all these years ago? Of about, course, about, like the pedophile rings and yeah. shit, and mm-hmm. now no one's like talking about him anymore. Mm-hmm. They're probably like, listen, Corey. All eyes are on you. You better keep your mouth shut during this very sensitive time for us. <laughs> We're not fucking around with you anymore, Corey. <laughs> He's having like a, like a free Britney moment. Yeah. It's going to be free Corey. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. You know, we, we should start that on the show. Just like hashtag free Corey. It's Dude, nah. some crazy shit. I was thinking- CNN ran a fucking story like a week ago on like, about uh, trying to debunk all the conspiracy theorists with Cornell and Bennington and, and Avicii and stuff because it's gaining so much traction again. And that was three years ago. Yeah. And they still have to run, like, counter-reports to it. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah, it's fucking wild. Crazy times we're living in, folks. On this day in music history... And on this day in music history, September 21st, 1966, Jimi Hendrix uh, changes the spelling of his name to J-I-M-I um, at the urging of his manager, Chaz Chandler. His manager should have changed his well, fucking name. Yeah, his I don't manager know. fucking killed him. <laughs> <laughs> I Read French news reports. I don't get that, dude. Is there like more to that story? Do we know anything? Here personally, on like what was the reason behind this? What killing him? It's because he started no, teaming up with the black fucking Panthers name. And shit. His <laughs> name. Our sources uh, sources have come up dry. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can we check the sources? Sounds cooler. Flies off the tongue. We got nothing, Jimmy. <laughs> they got nothing. Nothing. <laughs> anyway, more importantly, in 1993, Nirvana release in Euro. All Apologies, back with Rape Me, is released with it. It's the last Nirvana single released while Kurt Cobain is still alive. And I might have to release a little retraction here because Heart Shape Box was technically the first single. What was the last single actually released? Penny Royalty was like being released the week he died, and some places already had the single, and some places did Before didn't. he died? Yeah, some places sent it back to get the credit, and some places kept it, and those copies are, like, amongst the most valuable. I was gonna say, Nirvana what's on that animals. What's on that single? Uh, some versions have uh, hey, I, uh, Penny Royalty and I Hate Myself and Wanna Die, and some versions have Penny Royalty Where Did You Sleep Last Night? Oh, wow, I really? Shit. That die. Penny Royalty, I Hate Myself and Wanna Die is probably fucking dope. Well, yeah. and uh, hey, Where Did You Sleep Last Night wasn't released yet. The Unplugged album wasn't That's what I'm saying. So yet. this it's is just a studio? The it's yeah. the studio version of it? It's the version that's on the Unplugged, Unplugged. album. I read right I have the other one with I Hate Myself, I Want to Die. Maybe. What do you wait? What? The Penny Royalty, I Hate Myself, I Want to Die. No, no, no. The Penny Royalty is the studio version. I'm that's saying, what I mean. Where Did You Sleep Last Night? Two it's versions. the Unplugged recording. Yeah, He's saying two. out of the two versions, he'd rather have the I, I Hate Myself, I Want to Die one. Instead so, of the one with... One has I. They both have. I hate myself and want to die. Oh, and one, one doesn't extra, have. Where did you sleep uh, last night? I thought night? you said I think one the vinyls don't have. Where did you sleep last night? Oh. The CDs have it. Okay, so the CDs have all three tracks. Yeah, but they're they're worth like. Uh, I'm gonna ask you. Fifteen. You've searched bucks this up before. Yeah. Damn. What the fuck? Two grand. If any of you out yeah. there, avid Nirvana collectors, have. Uh, I have a fake one. You have a fake one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, like an unofficial. Mm. Yeah. Okay. If anyone out there has uh, one for a decent price, you know where to find us. They did reissue it for Record Store Day one year, though, so you can get those. It's probably a little bit cheaper. Eh, it's Still a limited the, price. Probably no more than like seventy five bucks, okay. I would guess. Yeah, we're looking for first initial runs. <laughs> <laughs> we need that fifteen hundo game. <laughs> I'll hit you at uh, seven fifty. Yeah. That will- yeah. Speaking of which, oh, you're not on Facebook anymore, so you don't see Marketplace. Someone's got a Kurt Cobain Jag for 1100 bucks on there. It's been on there for like two months. I sold mine for 1075. So I was pretty right. happy with that. Yeah. yeah, but this dude's been sitting on it for a while now. I had to drive to Connecticut to do so, so it cost me. That's how I basically got like a thousand. But yeah, it's crazy. He should have paid for uh, expenses. He didn't haggle with me at all. So you made it so easy. I got, yeah. yeah, that's good. I was like, it was it was a two and a half hour drive. It was right at the edge of Connecticut. Yeah, got to yeah. keep the personal yeah. trade alive and strong. 
Yeah. Yeah. So any of you listeners out there in the tri-state area or on the East Coast in general, if you're looking for a Kurt Cobain Jaguar, mm-hmm. it's all marketplace for 1100 bucks. It's I'll, been out I there will, for a while. I will say, grand. I don't miss my Kurt Cobain Jaguar, though. That neck really fucking killed it for me because... Mm. Um, you're nuts, dude. I love that guitar. The 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 radius on the neck is wrong. They're charging eleven hundred dollars for it, like it's this like perfect reissue of what Kirk Cobain played. Kirk Cobain had an old school neck on it. Yeah, you know what I mean. That was the seven point twenty five radius. This has like the new modern player nine point five radius, and it, it really killed it for me. I, the Jazzmaster I like so much better. <sighs> that guitar was awesome. <laughs> uh Anyways, in 2001, the benefit concert, America, a tribute to heroes, airs on most major TV networks, raising over $128 million for victims of the September 11th attacks. Performers include Bruce Springsteen, Neil Young, Paul Simon, Billy Joel, Tom Petty, and Willie Nelson. Going to this cast of characters here, I feel like they're like the ones where it's like, okay, we're doing a relief concert, we gotta get Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Yeah, we got to get Joel, Paul Simon. Tom Petty. And it's like, hey, uh, what's uh, Billy Joel up to nowadays? Oh, he's just playing, you know, piano Madison on the Square side Garden of the street. Madison every fucking year. <laughs> whatever he does now. Fuck Billy Joel. Bring it all the way Willie back. Willie Nelson is obviously the token fellow in that group. I mean. I started the fire, asshole. <laughs> Paul Simon. <laughs> Willie Nelson's fucking, definitely token. Poor Art Garfunkel. He's just watching Paul go out there. <laughs> I feel like Bruce Springsteen and Neil Young... Bruce Springsteen more than Neil Young is like the like we're having a relief concert. Well, we need Bruce. Yeah, Bruce you want to instill patriotism into the country. Bruce yeah. Springsteen's kind of like that soft protest singer where he's not really singing against these anything. He's just kind of like I feel the working man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he yeah. is like the guy for every blue collar bar. Like you're yeah. definitely hearing like yeah. born in the USA on while mm-hmm. everyone's like getting like even though it's an anti American song. <laughs> Going off. To kill the yellow man. <laughs> like, as they're sitting there with their yeah. fucking, you know, mugs filled with their fucking fourth or fifth Miller Light. Oh, yeah, dude. Coors Light. They're sitting there. Oh, my God. I love this song. They're oh just my- getting fat, yeah. not even drunk. Just you go back it. to the 80s when you make America great again. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years forward in 2011, REM announced that they're calling it quits after more than 30 years. Um, in a post on their website, the band members write, to our fans and friends as REM and as lifelong friends and co-conspirators, we have decided to call it a day as a band. We walk away with a great sense of gratitude, of finality, and of astonishment at all we've accomplished. To anyone who ever felt touched by our music, our deepest thanks for listening. Wow, that was really fucking, like... Professional. Yeah, like somebody else definitely wrote that. Yeah. Michael Stipes and uh, REM definitely. didn't fucking care anymore. <laughs> yeah. And they hyped those last two albums up as like these big return yeah. to forms and goodness, so they could go out on a high note. But it was all they were kind of just pumping out songs. They were just, just kind of done. The, yeah, like they were their last real album was probably Reveal. Yeah, and it wasn't as good. Like yeah. it was a decline, and it's like, I honestly around the sun was trash, and then accelerate <clears throat> and collapse in an hour, like. I'll accelerate's all right. Like I'd give accelerate maybe three and a half out of five. Like right around reveal and then collapse into now probably like two and I and honestly, down, back down there with around the sun. New Adventures came out in 01, right? No, nah, that was like ninety six. Oh, so that was that early? That was the follow up to Monster. Oh wow, yeah, because that's like and the last one I really got into was New Adventures and Hi Fi. You know, I like funny. up and reveal. Going back to Accelerate, I remember the first time that me and you like actually hung out. It was your yeah, birthday you party. Yeah, I bought you Accelerate. Yeah, I still have it. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Like I remember sitting there like Connor. I liked like, it when it came M. out. Yeah, I remember Connor was like, like uh, I was like Connor likes REM. This just came out. I'm pretty sure he'll like this. Yeah, <laughs> nah, that was good. We've been best friends ever since. Yeah. So again, thank you, REM. Supernatural, super serious was a banger. If you think about it, this podcast wouldn't be possible without the uh, help of uh, Michael Stipe and the boys of REM. That's crazy to think about. We owe them a debt of gra- uh, you know a debt of gratitude. Yeah, he's the one we're talking about to anybody who felt touched by our music. Our deepest thanks for listening. Well, you're welcome. Twenty twelve, <laughs> when Green Day set us cut short at the iHeart Radio Festival oh in Vegas. 
Lead singer Billy Joe Armstrong flies off the handle, stopping the show and going to a rant where he says, I'm not fucking Justin Bieber, you motherfuckers. You gotta be fucking joking. It's so weird that this brought up. I was on Instagram before I came here, fucking saw a video of some kid came up on guitar, and it was like a 30 second video. So I tried to watch the whole thing, and then that's the first one you. Like, if you type in Green Day for anything, yeah. that video is somewhere in there. The issue started, they were in the middle of... Uh, it was one of their shitty Gene news songs. Control. No, no, guns. no, what the fuck? Hold on. Gun. I can tell you right now. No, it's, it's an older song. Was it? I was pretty sure it was a new song. Because they were touring off a fucking album they just came out with. Which, in 2012... 20, nah, 2012, so they didn't have, research. like, 21st Century Breakdown was their newest album. That was from 09. Why can't I think of the fuck? Udo Dota oh, Stray was the next one after that, and that was, like, 2014 or 15. That was shit. Maybe 13, I You've think. seen this video, right? Yeah. It's well, fucking what's funny is they are, like, fucking Justin Bieber now. This was a yep. funny yeah. video to watch, because the whole reason it started was he's playing Basket Case, and there's a sign, like an automatic sign in the way back of the fucking crowd that tells you how many, how much time you have left. Yep. And it said one minutes, because it was just a countdown, so there's one left, and he stopped. He's like, one fucking minute? So I guess one fucking minute? Yeah, but you fucking Justin Bieber, yeah, but you motherfuckers. Him, but you make him sound like he's got balls That's to what he's pissed like, me off. One that, fucking minute? I know that. One fucking minute? I, I'm not Justin but he, Bieber. That's what I'm saying. He's up there with his black dyed hair, like the eyeliner, like trying to really Still be super the American punk rock. Idiot, oh, like, yeah, dude. True. And the, um, like, I get where it was going but I mean you were watching that countdown the whole time so when you started basket case and you knew it's like a three four minute song and it mm-hmm. says two minutes like you really started playing the song just to lead up to that like to me it felt gimmicky like we're Green Day we're still a punk band like we're yeah, trying to show true. then our... he smashes a fucking guitar on yeah. stage like oh so you know what it. I'm gonna do yeah and then what's the I'm gonna bass break his my name? own shit what's the bass's name Mike Dirt Mike Dirt Dur- Dur- yeah he started smashing his bass too when he saw Mike Billy Joe Dur- lose his mind it's like he was just like I gotta support my boy here I can't fucking <laughs> let him be out here I can fool and not what see what Chris Novosella kept doing yeah the two of them when he stopped they were both like 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 Billy you're not this cool stop please I'm just gonna let you guys know if something ever like that ever happens, I'm not smashing any guitars. If you guys do, you wouldn't smash the Johnson. You're bringing in uh, easy seven figures annually. Yeah. <laughs> you might smash the Johnson. You're Green yeah, Day smash. on the yeah. Right? <laughs> you might go like, fuck this thing. Any yeah. of them, any of them besides the Johnson. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I could see you smashing that Squire seven figure salary. A little pissed off, maybe a couple beers in here. <laughs> Squire might be smoked. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, sorry, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> um, Someone actually commented on it because he tried to smash it. I think it was like an Epiphone. Um, no, it was a Les Paul Jr. It was a Les Paul Jr. Was it a Gibson? Yeah. So, like, dude, he tried to smash it, and it like took him like five tries, yeah, and nothing happened. And someone was like, two things about this video. One, that was the weakest fucking mm-hmm. freakout ever. And two, that is the most durable guitar I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to smash this thing, and it was just like, they're How all the fuck like, did Kurt Cobain do this? <laughs> yeah, dude. He was strong as hell. Billy Joe's a bitch. <laughs> fuck you, Gibson, making this thing so goddamn good. Them bolt-on necks, bro. Yeah, Come dude. right off. <laughs> However, if he were to drop the Gibson, just like just dropped it flat on its face, would have broken the headstock off. It would have broken oh, the yeah. point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. However, thinking about it though, it probably should have just smashed the fucking headstock off to begin with. Just been like, boom, just yeah. smash it, broken. It would have looked way cooler than I'm just gonna hit the stage with it four or five times. Yeah, he was in the middle of a gimmicky. Uh, <laughs> we're still cool act at this point in time. What a pussy. Their new stuff is absolutely terrible. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, it's I was a teenage teenage. <laughs> It's like, yeah, dude, we all were. (laughs) At some point or another. (laughs) Lastly, here in music news, in 2017, to thwart low payouts on YouTube, Post Malone releases a version of his latest single, Rockstar, and that is just the chorus looped five times. Comments are disabled, and users are offered a link to hear the full version on more profitable platforms. Wow. Taking what this fucking cheapskate. <laughs> well, I need my money. However, These motherfuckers want to listen to Rockstar. They gotta pay. 
However, if you probably looked in the related videos, the song was probably on there anyway. Yeah. Uploaded by somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no full on the internet. Dude. Really? You don't like nah. Post Malone? Post Malone gets way too much prop, way too much props. This is the book. thing I feel really bad with Post Malone is, is exactly what you're saying because I feel the same way about Post Malone. Mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of his music. No. Nah. But his character, like listening to him and like talking to him and seeing where his influences actually are, I yeah. thought was pretty cool because well, he's, he's not a live stream Nirvana thing. That's I what thought I'm, that was yeah. trash. Really? You thought it was that bad? As one who lies all up yeah. this See, there's the thing, too. I yeah, noticed just because like of the situation. It. Like, he had the solo cup going. Like, he was just kind of getting more and more off his game as the fucking show Damn. was going on. And here's the thing with especially Post Malone. You don't have many figures that represent a band unless mm-hmm. they're huge already. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't see many people. Like, the the most underground people will go to try to show off a band is, like, wearing a Misfits shirt or, like, a Joy Division shirt. The fucking yeah. Unknown Pleasures album cover. Just to try to be as more obscure than, like, oh, look at my Rain and Blood t-shirt. Or, mm-hmm. You know, like, everyone always puts on this front and trying to listen to, like, a big act where if you're trying to really expose and say you listen to music that's not as mainstream as what you're a part of, of like you could find thousands of other bands to like kind of put on a show for people make a big mistake too with nirvana when they cover them i've made this mistake myself before so like they think they know the three riffs or whatever in this song and they think they can just play it like no no problem yeah those songs are tricky like there's a lot of like random little accents and stuff that if you don't and a lot of like dynamic build-ups and stuff where if you don't think about that shit like you have to like take a very close look at a nirvana song to cover i've it. i've been a victim of the cobainisms once or twice yeah like you you think you know how to play it and then like yep. you you go to play the whole song and you're like oh there's a bunch of little parts in here i never really thought about yeah, yeah. have you been affected by the cobainisms of learning a nirvana song Please if you were a loved line. one suffered by Cobainism <laughs> between the years of... <laughs> like, I've been playing guitar for 15 years and listening to Nirvana to the whole time. And there's still Nirvana songs that throw me for a loop. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but keeping it on Nirvana as well, this kind of brings us into our main topic. Main topic. I was going to say, that was like a little lackluster right there. Let me build up for him. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking intro to a. My burps just album. don't come out. <laughs> Pretty sure that's like the vocals from most deicide work. <laughs> Shout out to Glenn. Reflux. <laughs> yeah. I got real bad acid reflux, boys. Yeah, didn't he say something about us wishing him a happy birthday? Yeah, he's like, LOL, thanks. Awesome. Who? Glenn, Glenn Benton. Benton from DSI. Uh, <laughs> lower man, yeah. He said laugh out loud. <clears throat> yeah, he's like, what the fuck is that supposed to I can't picture this Glenn Benton who burned Glenn an upside down Benton. cross into his fucking forehead, <laughs> punching the three letters of LOL on a fucking keyboard or a phone. It's just. Bro, he did. That's what the fuck is up. funny about this shit, Glenn? Like, we're wishing you a happy birthday. This is I'm no trying joke. Trying to be nice, dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean. That was nicer than a lot of other ones that we've gotten. But you, you know, wrote a song called "Fuck Your God" and you wrote "LOL." On DSI page. did kind of like that was kind of bothered me because they they stole limelight from a bunch of other little bands. And ironic because they were. I liked the, the other ones. That didn't make the like I'm sure you guys have a lot of underground metal bands that you liked that didn't get. Well, I was going to mention because of the Post Malone topic, since I said earlier, topic in reference to Nirvana. Like you're saying, Connor, as well, with um, the idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I don't know how DSI translates, but <laughs> I did my best. Yeah, I, I was just like, okay, for the for the viewers that you don't should have know, like a rewind transition there. <laughs> well, I already started the transition. I don't know what happened there. I know nothing of DSI. So branching off of what Steve was saying with the Nirvana thing, I feel like Nirvana kind of overshadowed a lot of bands that may or may not have even influenced them at certain points. Yeah. Like a band that's that's pretty notable. Tad, Mud Honey, Tad. Jesus, Lizard, Pixies. Tad yeah. and Jesus, uh, Lizard are like the two that come to mind. And the Wipers, too. Wipers. The yeah. Wipers bothers Tad's me. Tad's my big one. Hole. <laughs> I think Wipers, for me, because especially as of recent listening to them and like their writing structure, how they were kind of like that hybrid to take to from punk into Nirvana. And Nirvana's biggest influence 
influences were punk bands yeah. coming into it and starting that alternative sound. And Nirvana also- is literally like the production value of Cheap Trick, the dynamics of the Pixies and the songwriting arrangement of the, style of the White Yes, yeah. And yeah. it's funny too because this is where <laughs> it gets Nirvana. to me when yeah. we talk about like bigger bands that overshadow like, like the Black smaller Sabbath ones. Crunch. Yeah. D7 for instance. The cover, right? Like Insane. I have a friend, huge fucking Nirvana fan. Like will swear by it to this day. Has a really intricate in utero tattoo on him. And I asked him one day I was like, the fucking D7 cover like, you ever listen to The Wipers? And he's like, no. And I was like, well, D7, you've heard that song by Nirvana, right? He's like, yeah. Now, don't you ever think, like, this band covered a song, maybe I should go check out where it fucking came from? My cousin's like that. He grew up a big Nirvana fan, and he's, like, never listened to Meat Puppets. Or yeah, that's what's, that's yeah. what's crazy. Meat Puppets yeah. are another one, too. They're good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were kind of big from Unplugged, and Nirvana really shouted them out with that. Mm-hmm. Like, but then Backwater came out, like, within six months after that. Like, they played, like, Letterman and Leno and all and that. And yeah. I wake up in the morning yeah. to Dirt feel it. the day break on my face. But it's funny because people always complain, too, about, like, new music, new music sucks, new music sucks. But there's, like, a whole Moderate plethora rock. of bands that people haven't fucking listened to that... Yeah. totally relate to already what they've heard new music doesn't have to be from 2020 it could be like i said i try to fucking show this dude the wipers and he kind of was like yeah i'll listen to it at some point <clears throat> and never fucking once brought it up again and it's like dude if you actually listen to is this real or youth of america or over the edge you would have been like wow like i fucking get it now yeah or go absolutely. out and listen to tons of nirvana go. fans don't even give the pixies a go which is that that baffles me and or or like pj harvey or yeah, something yeah that baffles yeah. Like especially harvey with didn't this, get nearly especially as especially steve albini doing have. their yeah. fucking work like you yeah. would think just for producers alone you'd be like wow this has to be similar in some way yeah, yeah. you know i mean um there was tons of bands. The Breeders, uh, Urge yeah. Overkill. Yeah. Um, I think Violent Femmes got shafted in that era Paul, too, man. Grun Truck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Grun Truck's another one uh, I just recently L7, got into. Um, yep. Skin Yard. Pavement. Pavement. Yeah, even Pavement could have been bigger. Like, Oscar Do. Pavement kind of made the Dinosaur one. Jr. mistake where they were like, for some reason, dead set on only having one single per album. Yeah, which in the '90s wasn't cutting it. Yeah, you yeah. had motherfuckers to drop in like eight singles and shit. <sighs> Look at Dirt; like almost yeah. the whole thing is singles. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. Had like five singles in utero. There would have been four and ten. five songs released. A ten. Single. I was just gonna per, say yeah, as well. Probably was ten. Had a shit ton of singles. The biggest yeah. band, though, and we always talk about this. That kind of got snubbed on that tail end of like the post punk scene leading into the alternative grunge era has got to be the replacements. The replacements are a huge. Tim they should have been the a number one shaft, album. Dude. Yeah, dude. Bastards of Young, Left of the Dial, Kiss Me on the Bus, yeah. Little Mascara. And it's funny because when mm-hmm. you talk about these all bands, my life. all my life, we yeah. like all like growing up, all of us like used to burn CDs, yeah, listen to that shit. But it's like again, you could go talk to someone well, who knows here Nirvana, comes a regular knows. Pearl Jam, no sound guard and in and out. But then if you bring up the replacements, you bring up, you know, the wipers, you bring up wires, pink flag. It's funny with the replacements because I feel like a big part of why the replacements didn't like blow up in the 90s was because Paul Westerberg was kind of on like a Bruce Springsteen, like Keith Richards, like singer songwriter tip in the 90s, which was like super out. Kurt Cobain even made a comment against the replacements in an interview. Oh, yeah. Someone was like, Did you like the replacements? Were they an influence? And he was like, yeah, I had a lot of friends that liked the replacements. I saw them live a couple times. Never got it. <laughs> yeah, which is and that's that's yeah. like it just no, baffles like, me though he, because it was like he felt bad saying it. Like I got a lot of friends that like them. Like it was just never my bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is strange too because it, I don't know. They like, were they were too like classic Rocky for him. That's what it was. Yeah, they. Had, they'd, they got away from the punk stuff too quick for him. I yeah. think he didn't like that. Well, they fucking dude. I, in my opinion, I think the Replacements might be like one of the most underrated bands like ever. Yeah, like they they got the be, fucking full blown shaft. Let yeah. it be should have been like their like document by REM where they like, they were like like it had like two hits off it or whatever like Lie Will Dare maybe and like uh like even like uh the Kiss cover uh Black Diamond Black Diamond, Black Diamond. Yeah. 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 awesome yeah. Um, Ooh, fucking black diamond. What's it called? <laughs> the uh, Dan and Tim could have had like five singles. Oh yeah, yeah. whole my life. Obviously, that that was even the cool pleased thing, to me. Though. He could have had like three. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he, and then he's like, 
every genre seems to have like that era. Like you go back even into like Pink Floyd, The Doors, one of the biggest bands. And again, there's so many bands that came out around that time that never really got the same recognition a part of that classic rock blending into that psychedelic rock one of like the 13th floor elevators yeah, yeah that, that album first album coming out in 1966 mm-hmm. right you're gonna miss me could have been number one i don't understand like splash it, could have been a yeah. top 40 yep and i think yeah. people it's they they just tend to scratch the surface sometimes yeah because there was even like other bands like moby grape was out there you had Quick other Silver messenger yeah service. you had other acts yeah. out there Love. yep yeah. Yeah, dude. And then you go forward, Stooges. you go forward. Stooges yeah. is a huge one. Yeah. Because Iggy huge. Pop is yeah. the only reason that blew up to begin with. And if you watch the documentary, I think we recommended really, it a while Bowie. ago. Yeah. David Bowie shining a light. Yeah. But yeah. they people hated the Stooges when they were on stage. They got oh. shit everywhere they went performing as oh, the he's Stooges. He's like rubbing fucking peanut butter on himself and shit. People thought he was weird. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, Funhouse should have been a fucking. Yeah, yeah. yeah should have been a smash hit. Yeah. Absolutely. Little do they know, if they were to wait like two more decades, it would meet the uh, illustrious Gigi Allen. And Red oh, Hot yeah. Chili Peppers with the fucking socks and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then it's like, too, in, in that nothing. sense as yeah. well. You could even bring in, like, when we talk about television. Hmm. Like, Marky Moon should have been a huge a album. album yeah. And if it wasn't for our friends at Rate Your Music, I probably would never even really know about that album because I think that's a top album. What, that 77 or something it's like that? Stop, yeah. Yeah, and then you go forward, and we kind of brought them up as being, like, kind of an overcasting, but tending to spawn the genre because Joy Division never got an opportunity to tour, kind of tour in the States. overshadowed everybody in that first new wave. And The Cure, I think. Yeah, and The, the Smiths, Cure. they yeah, all really yeah. kind of... Because, like, Echo and the Buddy Men never got really past that era and, like, they got blended in as being, like, another candle box. Yeah, and it's funny. Me and you genre. had... We had the Smiths argument a little bit in the group chat and I went back and listened to that first Smiths album and uh, I wasn't crazy about it. <laughs> Yeah, I still I, was boring. I still think that and Queen is Dead are just they're good albums. They're good, but I I just think they're overrated. Like, well, but that's the thing. If I the think, marketing wasn't as good as it was, I think people would have they would be like as popular now as like Midnight Oil. Well, ironically, shit. when you talk about that band, you can say that about like for instance when we talk about like the big four thrash is like the most notor- notable like overshadowing of bands because in that scene oh, yeah. in the 80s there were so many thrash acts coming out that could never hit that level of success financially because there was already the four on the pedestal mm-hmm. you know slayer megadeth anthrax and metallica and but- i honestly i haven't listened to a full metallica probably in like a year but I've listened to like full Exodus albums, full Testament albums. Well, let's say for good reason. Overkill hasn't put out anything that was worth a fuck in yeah. like the last like twenty five years. But like that's kind of how I am with you and the Smiths because there was a point in time where you played the Smiths. Like, yeah, you really sure. played the shit out of them. Well, that was mainly because I hung out with a certain someone who loved the Smiths. Yeah, and they like I, I was trying to like them kind of that. They always had songs I liked. I liked the Headmaster Ritual. I like uh uh. I won't share you. I like. Yeah. I like. Uh, Stop me if you think you've heard this one before. Hand in glove. What difference does it make? Is great. Mm. I like that song. That's never crazy. Uh, Big mouth strikes again. Big it's mouth. great. There's uh, a light. And then there's maybe one or two more that I can't think of. But I panic. Uh, but yeah, the albums don't. They're singles band for me. I, yeah. I like louder than bombs is. Pretty, you really is have all that. That's how I am kind of with like the Cure. Yeah. Like there's certain albums that maybe I'll kind of go through, but I rather have like a greatest hits. I can listen Cure. to the Cure albums like Three Imaginary Boys, uh, Faith, Pornography. Pornography is the one that um, I really always go back to. Very kiss good. Kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. Um, I can listen to all their shit until like the mid '90s all the way through. What's big too is like staying like earlier as well because i had a thing where um like if you go if you show someone like an album cover for like uh you know let it be yeah by the beatles you know what i mean abbey road like people will just know that because it's just so in your face yeah, but around that time and, it, and it's funny because like even with the album cover should stand out to people but i have somebody like i was like showing albums to and i went and put on it was the velvet underground and nico hmm. the fact that that album is still known as like it's I think it's on like top albums oh, yeah. of all time but they never got that level of mainstream no. success I think it's only one times platinum 
Exactly. Uh, but that's crazy. what's crazy yeah, because album, really? that magnitude. Yeah, yeah, that's a they wow. they talked about that when You'd that album came There's out. Some albums you'd think like sold way more that didn't. Yeah, when that uh, album came out, it was the same thing with Iggy Pop at the time when he was with the Stooges. Yeah. They ripped that fucking album. They were like, "This is just dark, even depressing. The, it's like you know, it's even cynical. the idiot and uh, the Lost, Lost for, for Life. Life probably only went gold at best. Yeah, I would suspect. Yeah, um, like uh, like Tad probably never went gold. Yeah, no. Um, the Smiths never went platinum here. What about even like Mud Honey, dude? Mud Honey probably never even went gold. Yeah, Green River. Maybe yeah. Super Fuzz Big Moth, but that yeah. would be it. But it's just sad because, again, you talk about people that only scratch the surface because there's so many bands that are notable enough and nobody ever wants to really dig deep. And you think about how many talented acts there were out there that people never even fucking dove into because yeah. though they already had enough. They like got enough <clears> of what they wanted to listen to. Another one, uh, Sunny Day Real Estate. But yeah, they were a great original band that kind of pioneered a genre, and the whole like, emo scene technically came from them. Yeah, and fucking Dave Grohl comes along, steals half the band with fucking big Nirvana money, lures them in. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, you guys want to be in a fucking pulled up in a van band. now? Yeah, in I was Day to say. Real Estate Studio. I'm like, listen, I give you guys twenty thousand dollars cash right now. He's you guys like, sick and tired of putting in albums that nobody knows about. He's like the equivalent <laughs> to like the fucking creepy dude in the rape van luring kids. That's in what I'm saying. Yeah, he pulled right up to the sunny day studios <laughs> like listen you guys are sick of not being on the radio aren't you yeah. steering the du- the 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 that direction that germanic dude he, he sucks <laughs> come with me steering the direction towards uh like a decade that wasn't really talked about at all is eight is the 80s well aside and, from the thrash and like all the punk acts yeah, and stuff yeah like uh the hair metal thing, dude. A lot of bands got overlooked because of the poisons and the motley crews oh, yeah. and the shit like that Bands like Winger. Yeah. Like. Who's Beavis and Butthead's friend? Uh. Nelson? No. Uh. Stewart. Stewart. Yeah. yeah. He likes Winger. Say, <laughs> say whatever you will about Kip Winger. I think the guy's a tool. But they did make extremely good music. Yeah. Like Even that. Rat, to an extent, kind of got overshadowed. And I. I yeah. Like, I kind of put it the rat. Now they're being. Did you see, see the, the Geico Percy? commercial? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robin Crosby. Bit of a rap, rap problem. <laughs> Have you seen that? No. The guy who commercial. It's so at the very I beginning, really it's a family anything, like we just yeah. moved into a new home and everything's going so great. And there's a pause, and the husband goes, "But we have a rat problem." And then it goes to the band like round. as they are now, it's like round and round. And they're trying to like do their dishes and shit. Rats in every room playing that song in the bathroom in the basement. It's fucking. And she's like, "Yeah, coming down with her laundry." And she sees them. Like, I always like the riff from that song. Yeah, it's a cool riff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of the cellar's got a lot of good riffs. Yeah, but how I've always kind of like. Uh, like it's no secret this is like my wheelhouse and i kind of put like there's like layers to these bands like you have like the van halens and then like the poisons of motley Cruz. then on the next tier down you have like the rats and you know like the badlands and shit like that and then underneath you have the bands like the wingers fucking firehouse Dockin'. slaughter Dockin. Yeah. Like, they're all these bands that are actually really fucking good that have these, like, insane virtuoso guitar players yeah. and shit, and they just they just got swallowed up in the whole thing. See, that's the sad danger, thing. Danger, danger. That scene. Or na- Naughty Naughty. Fucking one of them. And that's a shame, because that scene alone would became a turnoff because of the mainstream bands. Mm-hmm. Like, even for Def Leppard. I fucking hated Def Leppard for, like, the longest time because of, Still like, Pour fan. Some Sugar and all that shit. Oh, yeah. And then I went and listened to... Um, Adrenalize. What's the first album? High and Dry. High and Dry. And mm-hmm. I heard um, Let It Go, and I saw the video for it, and I was like, this would have been, like, a fucking, like... Like, I would have really enjoyed Def Leppard yeah, if this exactly. came out at a different time instead of being shadowed around what they became later on and mm-hmm. part of that. Like, every time I hear Def Leppard, the first thing I'm going to hear from somebody is they probably, like, blast Warren all the time. They probably blast the Scorpions all the time. Yeah. You know, like, and then there's other bands like Skid Row, for instance, that came up and were kind of, like, one foot in, one foot out and trying to be a heavy metal band and, like, a glam mm-hmm. metal band and, like, never Even really... Even the Scorpions to an extent. Same thing, yeah. Yeah, they they kind of got swallowed up in a lot of that shit. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like they had they had a couple big songs, but no, you don't ever hear people talking about Scorpions. Like you hear them talking about like Bon Jovi. Oh yeah, and shit like that. Yeah. Another band too, I kind of put in like that type of category too is Accept and Anvil. 
Yeah, except them, that Anvil. Yeah. Like, dude, they're both like extremely good fucking bands that are talked about. Like, you know, I like did see being... the Anvil movie, the story of Anvil. Did you? Yeah, it's tight. Very sad. I felt yeah, I, I felt yeah. bad, dude. Yeah. yeah, but they're like, I forget what they said. There was something. I mean, they like, have got to live a decent life, though. But still, it's just like yeah. that's just their part in the big tale. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it is what the, it is. What they say? They said something about like selling ten thousand albums or ten albums of something that's pure versus selling ten million of something that is fabricated. Yeah, and like that kind of like stuck with me. It was like, well. I kind of felt bad, but, you know, they they stuck to their guns with it. Yeah. But my fucking gripe with these two bands in particular, except in Anvil, is that you have all these fucking bands, particularly the bands from the Big Four. Well, yeah, Diamond Head in there as well. Yeah, but all these guys are like, oh, yeah, fucking major influence. Metallica wouldn't be Metallica without Anvil. And it's like, well... If this is the case, why didn't Metallica bring Anvil out I was on a fucking say, tour yeah. as an opening band or something? Like, why the fuck do you let these guys fall into obscurity if yeah. they're so fucking beloved and they're so important to the Metallica story? Yeah. Why did you let this happen? It's almost like, yeah. Even Slash, he was in the fucking movie, too, said the same thing. Oh, I wouldn't play guitar the same way if fucking Anvil didn't come out. It's like, well, then, in the 80s, no one was bigger love. than fucking Guns N' Roses. Like... <laughs> Why didn't you bring him out? Like, even, like, a Canadian leg of the tour. That's, like, um... One show. Especially in that scene, like, the new wave of British heavy metal that was coming over with, like, Judas Priest. Yeah. Especially Iron Maiden now, because they're still fucking touring and putting on huge shows. Venom was the one band with that album, Black Metal, and, you know, like, Welcome to Hell. They were coming out with that same redundant, you know kind of heavy metal almost power metal but with a darker tone and they totally inspired slayer they toured together and shit like that and venom's still putting out music which is ironic but venom gets put up there as nothing more than just like the obscure band that is the influence to these bands but same thing where like like venom's still putting out music yeah you imagine a slayer venom tour an iron maiden venom tour you know what I mean? But exactly. their whole moniker is like pentagrams and Satan and all this shit. But Slayer got away with it. Slayer was able to put out the same shit over and over and over again, get on the radio, you know what I mean? Put mm-hmm. on these huge shows, play with these fucking multi-successful bands. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it is it is funny because, like, especially Diamond Head, when we talked about, like, Anvil and Accept, like, Metallica obviously put them on the map with all their covers. Yeah. You know, I think on Kill Em All, like, the first reissue had a cover of Blitzkrieg on there, and people, when they hear the covers, it's like, all right, maybe I'll listen to the band, but never any point did you see, like, ooh, opening for Metallica. Wasn't Seek and Destroy a cover of another Diamond Head song? It's mm-hmm. very similar. The one, riff writing one could is, say. I'm not going to say it's called <laughs> Sucking My Love, <laughs> which I believe is track four off of Light of the Nations by, yeah, Diamond Yeah, Diamond. It, it, it's very similar. Very, very similar. I mean, however, as Metallica progressed later on in their career, they're, we they're see obviously... The I mean, they stole not. their whole album pretty much from Dave Mustaine, too, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we kill them all. Two they're albums. Nine. Well, actually, hey, Dave. yeah, Ride the Lightning's like 85%, like it starts to get watered down. Yeah. Like, even like Call of Cthulhu was Dave's, totally too. Totally Dave's. Tell you Dave's. Hey, that's Ride a, the Lightning, the riff and Ride the Lightning. Yeah. That's all his. Well, that, that that's another yeah, thing, yeah, too. Yeah, they just straight stole all his shit. Like, Metallica's yeah. kind of fucked. Like, Lars has this, like, super entitled attitude, and it's like, dude, you stole half your shit. Like, I honestly <laughs> just... Yeah, they the recently truth. played kicked out the dude who wrote everything and didn't let him use it himself. Yeah, they recently you know? played um, on Howard Stern's show... And, like, this is where I talk about the overshadowing that really bothers me. Because you have so many thrash acts out there that are thrash bands. Yeah. And Metallica was, like, the godfather of that. Like, the, you know, the father nurturing all these young bands and influencing all of them. I watched them play on the Howard Stern show. They played three songs. Three songs. Like, if you're going to pick three Metallica songs, you would want to hear, like, something off of Master of Puppets. Yeah. And Justice for All, even. Yeah. Any of those first I would four pick, albums. If I had to pick three Metallica songs on to play live and actually have them sound good, it would be like Welcome Home Sanitarium, Harvester of Sorrow, and just for shits and giggles, I'd want to hear For Whom the Bell Tolls. Yeah. Those would probably be my three. They played The Unforgiven, Wherever want, I May Roam, and All Within My Hands. I'd want Dude. The Unforgiven Three, The Day That Never Comes, <laughs> and Fuel. You wouldn't want the same anger yourself for the title track? 
Has anyone else heard this fucking all within my hands song? Yes, I just heard it. It's fucking total garbage. It's, really it's not even interesting. This is, but There's this is, no <laughs> sugarcoating it. It fucking sucks. This is where it bothers me though, because everyone that like gets close to these, like when we talk about all these big bands, nobody of any type of credibility is willing to say something to just acknowledge the fact that it's not because they don't want to get oh, shale and buff like, I, ha- like I, I got mad respect for howard stern but after they got done playing they's like wow that just blew me away i would have been like anything from like 1990 and below anything doing anything from then metallica hasn't blown me away in a live setting since 1989 the seattle Seattle. Yeah. Binge, live shit binge and purge. Dude, there's just like a fucking, there's a definitive line in Metallica live shows to where they just couldn't bring it anymore. Yeah. And it's like after the Black Album, they just couldn't do it. They, they're right. not the same band. Going back to like, I was just thinking, you know, especially with Nirvana and like we talk about, we talked about Tad. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Tad's one of like the biggest bands that I got into as a result of just because this band influenced this band. Mm-hmm. And like that's a band I just don't get why people just don't know off the top of their head and like put in the same realm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No voices speak out. It's just it's so like that music like even the Melvins, like the Melvins don't even get that much credit no. as they should. Do dee do dee do. Yeah. La, yeah, come la, to think of it, la, no one la. ever really talks about the Melvins at all. Yeah, no, no one gets like, at all. Talk about the and Melvins. it's funny because Lamb of God put that cover album uh, the Burn the Priest and they had Honey Bucket on there and yep. it's fucking dope but I mean again that, like even if I you like, who did you last night <laughs> it's just sad because again like go back to that D7 cover and it's like you, you wouldn't think your first interest was to be it says like cover song you know what I mean yeah. you look up the track listing and you don't think at any point like ooh the wipers obviously this is you know if anybody heard Painkiller by Death I'm sure they would want to know where the fuck it came from yeah Another two bands that I wanted to bring up too are the Tubes and the Smithereens. Mm. Yeah, Smithereens should have got more love for sure. Yeah, they they were like another band to where, like I say it all the time, where they're like a band that came out like before their time. Like you think about the Smithereens, if they they would came out like ninety three, exactly. Yeah, think if like if a girl like you came out and you know ninety three instead of eighty eight or whatever. Exactly, they were fucking huge. Same deal with I'll Be You by the Replacements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just so funny because no one ever really talks about these kind of bands like this, but they were like innovators in their own right. Like, yeah. Like, you can't tell me right now that, you know, no one had listened to the Smithereens and, you know, like, Kurt never fucking listened to a Smithereen song oh, before. He, I never he, got he a fucking... cited, especially for you, as one of his favorite albums. Oh, really? Times. Yeah, the one Smithereens album. See what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, there's no way that you can't cite these people as influences and then fucking... He considered getting the dude who produced... Especially for you for Nevermind, I think, even. Oh, you shit. really liked this, especially for you, yeah. Well, he made the right call with uh, Butch Fig. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, the, the dude who did the Smithereens would have made them sound like very 80s. Yeah. Like. Yeah. My biggest one is every death metal band except Cannibal Corpse before the year 2000. <laughs> <laughs> every single one. <laughs> Cannibal Corpse, Cannibal it's Corpse funny. Cannibal Corpse ruined it, dude. Well, Cannibal Corpse is still kind of to the general normal music listening population as like an underground band. Yeah, for the but most they're like part. the ones that like they're fucking like a submarine still like skimming the surface, like enough for everybody in the mainstreams to still understand yeah. it. To like that's the genre, but they totally like miss out everything on else. <laughs> the, yeah, like everything before two thousand, all that death metal that came out. <laughs> like, oh, this band was in Ace Ventura. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like Another anybody one, too, like Napalm Death and shit like that. Like all those older grindcore dude, bands Carcass, and stuff. Yeah, Carcass. Like Michael Lamont from fucking Arch Enemy now is huge with Arch Enemy and totally forgot he's like part of the originator of grindcore with Napalm Death. Well, here's the thing too. Like I never knew about Carcass until I got into fucking Arch Enemy and I'm like, Michael Lamont. Yeah. Let me read about him. He's a good guitar go player. Back to hard and work, I found, yeah, Carcass, exactly. Um, yeah, dude. It's fucking nuts. Like these bands that get overshadowed like this. Yeah, and the the we talked about this before in the extreme level of like death metal, especially. It just again, it's like when a bunch of bands are all coming out with nobody at the forefront to kind of bring them into a spotlight. Yeah, like you have other bands that are able to bring it there and kind of be subjected to people that want to go back and listen. There was never a band that could be on the radio. 
Like they're yeah. just they never conform to the, be able to do that. But you had thrash metal bands that could be on there. But you, I mean, that whole Tampa scene when you had like Obituary, you had Morbid Angel, you had Benediction, you had uh-huh. Carcass, you had Death, obviously. You know, but at never any point were people driving down the road and gonna hear like the philosopher on you know ninety three three or something. When yeah. I listened to Leprosy not too long ago, it, and I saw I was reading about them, and I saw they were from the Tampa, like it was recorded in yeah. Tampa. Hmm. I was like, this is totally a Tampa vibe. Oh yeah, but it's like, funny because if like wait, so you listen to Leprosy? I, I what did you think? And fate, yeah. What did you think about them? They're good. Yeah, I like them. I mean, uh, they're you, probably like. I like them better than like Ride the Lightning, less so than better than Ride the Lightning and Injustice for All, less than Kill 'Em All and Master Puppets. Huh. Yeah, I mean, like, so you can understand our love and appreciation for death. Yeah, I mean, metal's not like my main wheelhouse in general, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't think that's like a bad band. I think they're a good band. Yeah, I put them out there as a genre that I typically don't tell people about or recommend because i know how di- it's the same thing with jazz yeah like yeah, people so that people listen just... to jazz that really listen to jazz are like super pretentious and they'll like force it on you but me it's like i'll like some jazz but i'll never go out there and be like yo you should listen to this and death yeah. metal is like the same way like i can't put it out there as like this is gonna be a moderate listen that almost anybody could kind of find a way to enjoy like, you could go throw out Nirvana to people, Alice and Change the People, even Metallica as being, like, heavy enough to a point where people might listen to it if they yeah. actually are interested. But I couldn't be like, here, here's Scream Bloody Gore. You might yeah. like this album, Dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? My dad's listening to fucking Renegade by Sticks. You know what? You would like that? Mm-hmm. Actually, I do kind of remember my dad catching me listening to that kind of shit at one point <laughs> or another. And I believe it resulted in me punching his truck. Because he told me it wasn't real music, and being the angsty teenager I was, I was like, "I'll show you, Dad." Yeah, my uh, stepmom actually. It's called guttural out. vocals. It's a real thing. Yeah, I had an issue like that. My stepmom wouldn't take me on trips anymore when I was like 15 years old because she thought like I was like, like Damien from The Omen or something. Like, I might like <laughs> like the car might light on fire while we're driving or something. She got really like fucking weirdly <laughs> spiritual on me, and it was really bad for a while. That's funny. <laughs> So, I guess to kind of conclude this, do we, I guess let's pick one band. Like, recommend a band like that if you. Should have been big. Yeah. Exactly. Like, if you like this, you should have fucking listened to this. All right. Well, let me see here. Like, I would really like to say The Replacements, but I feel like that's just like a fucking given. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if you're fans of like the grunge, the, the whole grunge deal, if you're fans of the first Nirvana album, you have to check out Tad. Yeah. 100%. I feel like they should have been bigger than what they were. Yeah. I, 100%. Yeah, Tad, if they would have just been able to... Con- like, the problem with Tad was they just did... For whatever reason, when they did uh, Inhaler, they could... It was like uh, what I said with Dinosaur Jr. And uh, I forget who I compared them to, but you can't have one fucking single on an album in the 90s. Exactly. Yeah, you gotta have at least, like, two, you know, or three, like... Yeah. Um, for me, I don't know who I would pick. Um, maybe like Joy Division. Like Joy Division. I mean, he died though, so it's kind of tough. Like he, they kind of sunk the. Yeah, but shit. still, the fact that they were out to get on that U.S. tour, that those albums didn't like blow up at the thought. You know, yeah. they never were able to really get touch and scrape that. Like, but even going back, like that, how influential they are, I think it's a problem that like not a lot of people can get into it. Like I, I said, might say the Stooges are the band I think that should have been a lot bigger. That it's yeah. just like crazy they weren't huge. Yeah, like they're, it's crazy that the Stooges are like way less successful than REO Speedwagon. <laughs> yeah, mine's gonna be the Wipers. Okay, I think it's the Wipers should have been fucking way bigger than they are. Mm-hmm. I think Greg Sage is a genius. Yeah, Greg Sage is crazy. It's just the writing of talents and just the consistency and the. He literally image. invented the whole '90s style. Yeah. Because if you go from Is This Real to Youth of America, just like the transition from like a Ramones punky album and to over more the of like edge. a dark. Yeah, and then Over the oh, Edge was. The over edge. the Edge was like probably yeah. what Nirvana's In yeah. Utero, Nevermind compilation would be between Youth of America and, and Is This the, Real. Yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah. The Wipers. <laughs> nice. So, do you have any ideas of your own? 
or are you just you know mindless sheep wandering behind us listening to everything that we have to say if you have thoughts of your own and you have bands that were overshadowed or bands that people kind of just skim over in their normal day-to-day listening you can find us on all of our social media platforms at at our atm podcast and if you feel so inclined to do so you can write to us on our email at ratmpodcast at gmail.com. But that concludes the topic for this week. Now, let's get into our personal suggestions. I got the Mud Honey compilation, March to Fuzz. Um, it's from 2000, but Sub Pop still has them. So it's a dub, big 30 track, double disc CD. Uh, it's like a Mud Honey retrospective, greatest oh, nice. hits type deal, even though they had no hits. Um, you can still get them for cheap. Um, I mean, it's a Mud Honey career compilation. I'll go with if you want to check out one song from Mud Honey, maybe the money will roll right in. Nice to March to Fuzz. I'm gonna keep it on uh, what we talked about. I'm gonna recommend the 1981 second release by the Wipers, Youth of America. The standout track for me is Can This Be? Nice. Um, following. You know, following the uh, the topic here, I want to choose "Cats in the Cradle" by Ugly Kid Joe off their album "America's Least Wanted." I feel like Ugly Kid Joe they had this song, but all the other shit on this album, like everything about you and shit like that, like no one ever really talks about Ugly Kid Joe, and they were a pretty good fucking band for the time. And I feel like, well. They probably got the shaft because it was like the end of the whole hair metal thing and grunge was becoming more prevalent and it was, I think like this album came out like 1991. Ooh, yeah. So it was bad kind timing. of like, yeah, it was like extremely bad timing, but Ugly Kid Joe is a band that often gets overlooked like big time unless you hear the Cats in the Cradles cover. Actually, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not choosing Cats in the Cradles because <laughs> that one's fucking, that one's too obvious. I want to choose Everything About You. It was the second single off this album. America's least wanted ugly kid Joe. All right, they turned out to be correct. <laughs> yeah, America's least wanted. Our group suggestion this week, also following the the following in the footsteps of our topic, is the 2008 documentary directed by Shasha Gervasi, Anvil, the story of Anvil. Yeah, nice. It's definitely a good watch. Um. Like I said, it's a real tearjerker at certain points in the movie. And at the end of the day, rock and roll will never die. Metal don't metal. You ever rock notice that their albums... <laughs> Do you ever notice that their albums are like... Like, uh, this is 13. Metal on metal. Yes. And it's like it's like a letter, something else, and then another letter. Yes. Like, it's, like that's every one of their albums. Yeah. And, like, honestly, I, th- I thought about it, like, midway through the movie. I was like, if I was a band and, like, my first, like, three or four didn't hit, I think I'd give it up at a certain point. What, albums? Yeah. Yeah. Like, after, like, my... I If I didn't make it, or at least have, like, a fucking full-blown legitimate fucking hit by, like, album two... Mm. I would slowly start reconsidering my career choice yeah. or maybe trying to be like a session guy or like try to like talk to like fucking, I don't know. It is sad. Anvils became like the band that you pick last in dodgeball. Like you got, yeah. you know, I'm going to take a Metallica and make it this. Yeah, exactly. Like if oh, I was an anvil, anvil, dude, I'll like after anthrax. like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if I was an anvil, dude, after like the third or fourth album, I'd be fucking ringing up Scotty and be like, hey, man, Danny Spitz is about to fucking leave the band. <laughs> they I would even, yeah, you even Let find like ways around it. Like I'll take Scotty and other band SOD as well before. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Scott, you need some uh, guitar yeah, help and SOD? I'll be over. I'll, I'll oh be down for God, that. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave, don't look for Marty Friedman. I can handle this. I'll take, I'll take Rob Halford's solo career as well. <laughs> Before. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. <laughs> is there is there anybody else? Is there any side projects available? Yeah, I, I forget what it is. Like in South Park, like there'll be like a question, and like Cartman will raise his hand, and like Mr. Garrison like anybody else, anyone, please, anyone, because he just doesn't want to hear. That's like Anvil raising their hand in class. Like, <laughs> please God, poor band. 
Yeah, but don't let that deter you from watching this film. It's actually it's a, it's actually a really good documentary. Yeah, you should know about it if you like any of those bands mentioned. In Absolutely, the, actually, any of the bands we mentioned at all. Yeah, pretty much. If you're a fan of this podcast, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but once again, this is another episode of Rage Against the Mainstream podcast for the books. If you like, you can find us on our social media accounts: Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at R A T M Podcast. You can find us on our Gmail if you want to write to us, say some nice things, say some bad things. We don't care. We want to see some interaction from you guys. Let us know what you think. Do you think Anvil's the greatest fucking hidden gem, national treasure of Canada? Get at us at retmpodcast at gmail.com. But once again, this is Rage Against the Mainstream signing off. As always, I'm Bill. Connor. I'm Steve. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for listening.